Hey, how's it going? It's Craig. I'm out in the garage and today we've got a parcel delivered for the mod to do for the fellow YouTuber. Let's take a look. Okay, so I know this is from Marcus from Dad and Lads Gaming and when you know what console is inside of here, I don't know how, but he's managed to pick the perfect size box for this console. I don't know anyone else that would be able to do it other than Marcus. His setup, have a look at his channel. His setup is the neatest setup I've ever seen. Everything is rooted, every cable is out of the way. He's got switches and everything else. And it's typical for him for the box to turn up in something so neat and tidy. Um, <laughs> if most of the boxes I get delivered for people to repair their consoles is all mashed up and mangled. I'm trying to see one. I had some pinball parts delivered the other day and the box literally came squished. So I'll put a uh, photo up to show you how it came. This is an immaculate condition box. So um, <laughs> yeah, typical of Marcus. So in here is, I'll spoil the surprise before we open it, but you've seen it from the thumbnail anyway. Um, is a Master System one and a mod. I don't know what the mod is. I know Marcus said, I think it's the, the region mod, so the 50, 60 hertz mod. Um, I don't know what version of the mod he's bought. He's just said it's all included. Can you have a look at fitting it for him? So we'll open it up, take a look what's inside the box, and then we'll fit it and see how it goes. Cool. Okay, so something I never really talk about. So I normally put this into the multimeter into continuity mode for testing continuity from one point on a board to another point, just to make sure. And I always do the the beep test to make sure that something's going through. So that's what I've been doing when I've been cutting the traces on the other side of the board. But did you also know this is diode mode? So the symbol on there is the is the diode as well. So what it is good for, obviously checking continuity, but on the LED like this, so it's a three pin LED. If I bend the middle leg out, because that's our negative, if I hold that against the negative, and then I put this against the either of these, we're gonna light up. So let me turn this light off a second, so it's a bit darker in here. Lights up blue or lights up red. You can see it glowing on my gloves more. So this is a two color LED, three legs, and it's gonna light up. Put them both on and you're going to get like a purpley colour. But yeah, so I can either light up red or I can light up blue. So that's what's going to show us our 50 or 60 hertz when we've got it all running. But yeah, it's a quick one of testing LEDs using the multimeter. Um, something I didn't know immediately, I just found out later on. And yeah, it's been a massive help when I've been working on LEDs over the last couple of months. Because yeah, it's good to know the LEDs working before you even start putting it into a system. There we go, top tip.
Okay, so I've got it on the desk, and I've only got a couple of screws in there just to hold it into the case. Um, we're going to power it up. You'll see two things. So obviously, you'll see the size of the screen will change 50 hertz to 60 hertz. Our LED color will change, and you'll notice the difference in the sound. So let's test it first of all. So switch them on. We'll get our Sega sound. Even that sounds different to 60 hertz. Your blue LED shows 50 hertz. And then let's try, hang on, listen to the music on hang on, and then we'll restart it in 60 hertz mode and see what it sounds like. Okay, so that was 50 hertz mode. Let's switch it over, so press and hold the reset button. Screen changes straight away, we'll have a look at that in a second, but we're in 60 hertz mode now. Let's restart the system. Notice how quick that is compared to the other one. Amazing. So such a difference in uh, music. But even the screenplay. So the screen has got a border around it in 60 hertz mode. It's still got it obviously in that mode as well. It's just it's about half an inch, maybe an inch there. But if I get into gameplay, I'll show you the difference now. So that's 60 hertz mode. Watch the difference of the borders when we get into 50 hertz mode. And that's 50 hertz mode. It's about twice the size. So you're losing so much of your screen every single time you go into 50 hertz mode. So, yeah, we'll try another game on it just to make sure. But so far, we can switch back and forth using the, the reset button. We're back in 60 hertz mode and the system's working lovely. Let's take over some of these. Oh, dead. Okay, let's test out our type Amazing game. Uh, I'm not sure how much you'll hear the difference on the music on it, but I chose it because the music is good when you start playing the game. So let's do it at 50Hz mode first of all. See how the gameplay is. I'll skip it ahead so you don't have to watch all the intros and everything, but we'll get into the gameplay. So this is 50Hz mode. That sounds so much better. <laughs> I remember playing our type on the Amiga mainly. I had it on the Master System um, when I was younger, but my brother had it on the Amiga, and I remember playing it on that a lot of the time. Oh, almost died. Okay, so all installed, all working. I've had a quick blast on uh, our type just to test it out, of course. You've got to test these things out once you're done. And yeah, our type in 60 hertz mode is really good. I'm still terrible at it, but um, that's that's just the way it is. 50 hertz, 60 hertz, I still suck. Um, but the Dar Retro mod is really nice. It's quite easy to install those gold panels on the on the uh, PCB make it quite a big area to solder onto but to be honest it's exactly the same as a pick chip um, these pick chips cost me maybe 50 pence I buy them in Aliexpress I buy a bulk bag of them I program them on my programmer obviously not everyone can do that but I can program this up to be a 50 hertz 60 hertz mod for the Mega Drive the Master System whatever we needed to do and I can program that to, to do it and then you've got to buy your LED and things like that so the benefit of that uh, da retro mod is everything's all in one it is a right really nice easy system to do at home um, if you're new to soldering and things I, I to be honest trying to film it and solder onto it as well it was a bit of a messy and it, the, I was quite glad that they were quite big pads to be honest so, uh, so installed it and got it done I actually prefer soldering straight to chip legs um, I find it a little bit easier and a little bit neater, but uh, that was it was okay. It was nice to install. I would say if you're new to modding and things like that, you could do this fairly straightforward. There's a couple of traces you need to cut, and the rest of it is just soldering onto fairly decent sized um, locations. It did help that I had a desoldering gun and I got that old LED out of the way quite quickly, as well as that resistor. 
Um, you could do it with desoldering braid and everything else, but it is what it is, and we've got obviously the kit here to do it a little bit quicker. So, yeah, nice mod, all done, all nice and easy. We're going to get this back in the post of Marcus from Dad and the Lads Gaming. Uh, no doubt he'll have it set up with some bloody expensive cable that costs more than the system's worth in any way, but um, running through some beautiful setups. And he'd be cringing watching this video when I was doing gameplay because all my cables are an absolute mess when I'm moving things around in the garage still. So, um, Marcus, check out his channel. Uh, him, Tommy and Jake do a really great um, monthly review, monthly review of what games they played but they also do their pickups and everything else and the guys are really into manga at the moment where they do a load of game pickups and everything else so have a look at their content, it's really cool, link in the description down below. As usual all I'm going to do is send this back to Marcus, um, I've got a new Amazon wish list that I'm going to ask people instead of paying for the return postage and things like that. Um, that they chip in and buy something off my Amazon wish list. So um, as long as it covers the cost that I put out, this one Marcus sent me the mod, so I didn't really have to spend anything on it, other than the postage back to him. But as long as I cover that, I'm really, really happy. I'm not a professional. I'm not doing this for a living. Um, I'm not doing it to make money either. So um, there's everything on my wish list from uh, a bag of M&Ms right the way through to really expensive soldering irons. That's for trades or something else, that's a really high value item that we're going to look at. If I fix a console up and I want to get rid of it, then maybe instead of asking for money for it, I'll ask for something off my wish list. All of those wish list items are going to go into the project in the future. I've got, a, as I said, a really big project on the way, um, which I'm going to be working on. So any of those items are going to be going into the projects you'll see on this channel and anyone that does support me on our wish list I will shout out on the messages as well so cool thank you for watching as usual please if you're not already subscribed click the subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one Hi it's Marcus and Tommy we're Dad and Lads Gaming so Tommy if I was to tell you we'd received a console from Craig at Goodwin's place and it now had really super fast graphics, really cool graphics, and it was basically awesome. What would you think it was? I don't know, a PC or Series X or something. Oh, it's a Sega Master System. How's that gonna have good graphics? It looks, like it, it looks like what? It looks like a lot of shite. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. Well, I think it's amazing, Craig. Now it's 60 hertz, it is absolutely exactly how it should be. So thank you very much mate, and I'll try and get Tommy on board.